I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and even thrive through the reset that I hope you can certainly see has already begun. And we had so many questions in this week's Q&A and there were some other things that came in from some really wonderful viewers. So let's just dive right in. And first we're gonna do Axiom Curb Communities. What about the new patent that Visa applied for? So I looked that up and the US Patent and Trademark Mark Office published today that Visa has filed a patent application to create digital currency on a centralized computer using blockchain technology. This patent applies to digital dollars as well as other central bank digital currencies such as pounds, yen, and euros. So the physical currency of a central bank anywhere in the world could be digitized. Now, this is an interesting quote in here. Uh, yep. J. Christopher Giancarlo, senior counsel at Wilkie Farr and Gallagher and former chairman of the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, commented on Visa's patent filled with the, filed with the USPTO. And he said, this confirms when the U.S. does big things like the space program and the internet, there are partnerships between the private and public sector. This patent filing is evidence the private sector is very much at work on the future of money. There you go. So this is the direction that they're taking us in. And yes, private corporations, including Facebook, so they didn't like Facebook coming out with their own, maybe they like this one better. But of course, that's why I said it is possible and it is even maybe a little probable that the way that money will be created in the future is based upon transactions. So I don't know, maybe part of what's got going on right now and with people really being forced to tighten their belt and not as many transactions taking place, you know, maybe that could kickstart the new economy when there's enough money floating out there to create those transactions again, kind of like when uh, Paul Volcker, chairman, Fed chair back in the 80s, raised interest rates up to 21% so that they had, I mean, this isn't why he said he did it, but that gave the central banks an awful lot of ramp room to lower rates and control inflation. So if there is a cutback on transactions, that could give enough ramp room to create a lot of new money. It's just a thought. I don't know if that's really what's going to happen or not. We have to pay attention, but thank you very much for to Axiom Club community for bringing this to our attention. It's part of what this whole community is about. There's no way that I can possibly see everything but I'm really lucky because I do get things from viewers. Pay attention to this. Did you know about that, et cetera. So keep that going. Thank you very much. And uh, that kind of, I'm going to go to this one next because it, it flows into what we were just talking about. I lost my mouse. Sorry. Okay. Let me just pull up. Okay. I'm not really quite ready for this image yet, but this came in from one of our uh, viewers, our clients, and I'm not going to use any names, but what I think it's a she said, I hold accounts at, ver at various different banks in the region of West Virginia. So if any of you are experiencing the same kind of thing, what are you looking for? Whether or not, I don't have it up yet. I'm not ready yet. Okay. <laughs> Okay, see, this is live. Well, this particular one we're, we're recording, but you know, we're doing it just the way we're doing it. Anyway, I hold accounts at various different banks in the region of West Virginia. 
all of these banks have postings about a no cash policy on display. Now I'm going to bring up the slide so they can see that. Some are worded a bit different than others. Nevertheless, when I asked my private account handlers what it meant, all told me almost the same exact information. Information that something is about to take place very swiftly. First of all, I have obtained a photo from one of the banks. That's what you're looking at right now. Okay, here is what I was told by two different bank account representatives when I made inquiries about this new policy. First bank representative, when I asked her what this policy was about, here's what, uh, what she told me. Due to the federal government issuing debit stimulus cards loaded with cash upon them, well, loaded with fiat money upon them is, is a better way to say it, they have seen many people coming in and wanting to get the cash from the card. The Federal Bank Reserve has declared that this type of transaction will no longer be available as of June 11th, 2020. So those debit cards, as of June 11th, you're not going to be able to go in and get cash and cash them out. That these people were to spend that money and not save it in cash form as it was stimulus money meant to help stimulate the economy. I mean, they don't want us to save, but you saw what happened to the savings rate jumped to 33% once they issued those $1,200 uh, checks. So I replied, oh, okay, that does not affect me. I do not have a federal government issued card. I only have what the bank issued for my personal checking account, a Visa debit card. The bank representative told me this also affects your bank issued Visa debit cards as well, that I can still use it to make purchases at stores online, et cetera, as before, just that I can no longer use it to get cash out of my checking account. So I replied, so when I want cash, how am I to do that? Now, the bank representative told me that I need to come inside the bank, fill out a cash request form, and write a personal check unto myself to get cash from my checking account. So I'm going to make it really complicated. Oh, I don't have time to do that to discourage use of cash. However, they did not know what the daily limit for cash will be at this time as they would be informed daily upon opening. And that was the end of that first conversation. The second bank representative, while I was in another county at one of my banks, my account representative there has known me since 1998. I asked her if she could shed some light upon what all of this is about. Her reply was, the government is cracking down upon people hoarding large sums of cash outside of the bank. Yep, her exact words, outside of the bank, a.k.a. outside of the system, which ran through my head when she said those words. She told me that they are now not to give out $100 bills, only offer ones, five, tens, and rarely 20s if people start asking for large sums of cash in hopes that people will not draw down their accounts due to having to take such small denominations of cash versus $100 bills. But that will not work, she said, as no one around here even accepts $50 or $100 bills already, and she expects something else will happen when the Federal Reserve learns that people prefer the lower denominated bills. Now, I'm going to go off of this for just a second because another, you know, memory that sticks very clearly in my mind, my father was a developer in Kingston, New York. And one time I was home by myself and I had just gotten out of the shower, actually. And somebody came to the door and he handed me, I think it was 11 $1,000 bills for my father. Oh my God, I was so freaked out. I sat on the sofa holding on to those thousand dollar bills until he got home. I didn't even put him down to get dressed or anything because that was a tremendous amount of money. This would have been in the 60s, maybe early 70s, but late 60s. 
And that was a tremendous amount of money. Well, back then we had thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollar bills. We don't have those anymore. They didn't demonetize them. They simply took them out of circulation. So when anybody deposited them, they did not come out again. In India, they actually did, and Argentina and other places, they did actually say, boop, no longer money. They did that with a 500 euro note recently. So, you know, there are different ways to do it. Just wanted to bring that up because what's a hundred bucks? You go to the grocery store, are you spending that hundred dollar bill at the grocery store? And then some, that's not really that big a bill. But yeah, they want to make it very inconvenient. That's why they may demonetize them at some point. However, if they can just get them out of circulation, then they're doing it and you're not even realizing that they're doing it. It's pretty interesting. I asked her, how are the people that receive their stimulus money upon a government issued debit card, are they supposed to get their money then? Her reply was almost exactly what the first banker told me. They were told that the people were supposed to spend that money, not hoard it in cash, nor can they deposit it into their checking or savings accounts either. The only way they can get the money from the card is by using the card to make purchases, not save it. I asked her about my personal bank issued Visa debit checking card that the bank gave to me. She told me the same policies are going to into effect upon those as well too. But since I have checks, just write a check out to myself and she could give me cash out of my checking account. See, the more inconvenient they can make it, the more, that's called the nudge. They're nudging you, and that is actually a real term. They're nudging you in the direction that they want you to go. If it is more inconvenient for you to go into the bank and write a check and fill out a form, you are less likely to do it. And that takes us into the digital money. Uh, let's see. I asked her about the ATM machines and using my Visa debit check card at them. Her reply was that the daily limit is going to be reduced from 300 to a lower amount. But, but at that time, she did not know the new lower amount. So there, there's more in here, but she asked why, this was why I asked the question in chat on your live broadcast, because that's what this came out of, to see if others across the nation are experiencing similar banking policies now too. So quite frankly, if you are, please let us know. Put it in the comments because what you're really seeing is the noose getting tighter and tighter and tighter. This is not the beginning of it. This really started in earnest after 2008. It really started back in the 50s when you first had the first um, credit card. So they've been moving us in this direction in the 70s, things got a whole lot more intangible. Today, remember, some of you might remember um, coupon bonds, and you would clip the coupons, you would hold the physical certificates, you would clip, clip the coupons, send the, bond, send the coupon in, and they would give you your interest payment. Well, now all bonds are in book entry form only, which means you cannot take possession of a physical certificate. All of them are held at Seed and Company, who is actually the legal registered owner of everything that's held in there. So if you have an account at a brokerage or a bank or what have you, and you have this lovely statement that you said have XYZ, well, actually, legally, it's owned by Seed and Company. And if you actually take the time to go on the SEC's website and pull up anything that you think you own, what you're going to see is that they actually say, we only take instructions from the legal registered owner, which is Seed and Company, DTCC, DTC, which they all own the same thing. So, and, and who owns them? all the banks, all the big financial global players. So, you know, are you really in control of this? No, 
but this is definitely pushing you, which goes back to questions when people say, well, if they're doing this, then who cares about gold and silver? More important to have physical gold and silver in your possession and convert it as you need it rather than holding it in the system where it's easy to rob you. Because if you've got physical dollars, well, okay, you there's only two digits past that one, right? 1.00, that's one dollar. But in digital form, there's an infinite amount of digits past that period. So that means just like they've robbed you of all of your wealth through inflation, slowly over time, sometimes a little faster, sometimes a little slower. But, you know, we have what? A little bit, officially a little bit more than 3% out of the original dollars worth of purchasing power. Okay, well, they'll keep, be able to keep doing that just slowly so that you don't realize it makes having physical gold and silver that much more important. If you're experiencing this similar kind of thing, please share this. And uh, let's see, that was from viewer. I, I don't usually like to, to do names, so but I really appreciate you sending that to us. And if we can say your name, then you can let me know that too. And I'm happy to thank you that way. Uh, and Stephen Regal asks, because he's everybody else can see his name, maybe is the coronavirus a tool to slow down inflation, slow down the velocity of money? Um, I don't think, it is slowing down the velocity of money, but the velocity of money have been slowing down since I think 1997, and it is getting worse. I think that it is a tool to justify the transition and the extreme measures that they're taking because we are going into a new financial system. So I think the coronavirus is just the tool to justify it. Would you have tolerated another 2008? It was happening before. Hey, we went in, officially, we went into recession in February. But even before that, we had so many technical indicators that we were headed toward recession. It's not, they'll point the finger at coronavirus and people go, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and now they're saying this is going to be the shortest bear market in history and the shortest, well, some are saying the shortest uh, depression in history. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. And Craig Weber asks, how do you see currency reset playing out for countries like Canada? that doesn't have gold reserves. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't see it very uh, playing out very well. Countries that have, like Canada, doesn't have any gold reserves. They sold a little bit off that they did. And I haven't really seen them accumulating any. So um, they're going to be at the whim of the rest of the world. And that's not going to fare very well for Canadians, of which my daughter's married to one. And, you know, so, I mean... Uh, little dot 777 has the Fed been taken into the Treasury and if yes does the DGT have control over it now and what does that mean for American C banks and people and I think you mean commercial banks uh, you know it should be pretty clear that officially the Fed is still officially independent but is it independent Heck no. Don't you remember the Fed pivot? The markets throw a tantrum and the Fed responds. So, and, and frankly, the Federal Reserve officially has been buying government debt since December, two, I'm pretty sure it's 2002. I don't have that graph in front of me, but I think it was December 13th of 2002, the Fed has been buying government debt. So I know they keep talking about it being independent, but they are working hand in hand. In 2008, the heavy, the, most of the heavy lifting was really done by the central bank. But today, oh heck no, you've got the government and the central bank both issuing so much debt, so much credit, so much money. This cannot end well. It just cannot end well. That's why you've got to have the physical gold and silver. And that's why the strategy that I created for myself, 
based upon my studies of currency life cycles. These are just repeatable patterns. This is not rocket science. It's really a very simple strategy. And all of our consultants are also strategy specialists. They can explain this to you, but you know, you're going to go, well, that makes all the sense in the world. So keep that in mind. We're in the eye of the storm. There's a little bit of a lull right now. We have some premiums that are going down. They're still there, but the premiums are going down. We've got a little bit better availability. Take advantage of it. We have gold and silver. Do it before this next rush comes in. Please, please, please. So uh, this last week, I was on with Tony over at a minute to midnight. And since uh, I haven't done it yet as we're recording this, but I always have a good time with Tony. It's always a great interview. So I'm certain that this one is as well. And this coming week, I will have my very good friend, Gerald Salente on. And you know, that should be a very heated and very interesting with everything that's happened since the last time I've had him on. I'm really looking forward to this on Coffee with Lynette and with DJ Randy on Standing on the Edge, BFAM 109.6 on Thursday. And that'll be live, won't it? And that'll be live. So you'll want to definitely turn into that. Make sure you visit our blog for any of the links and any of the images that we put up, itmtrading.com forward slash blog. This, of course, will also be posted on Brighteon. And if you have concerns and you want to talk to one of our consultants about the strategy utilizing physical gold and silver to help you survive and even thrive and maybe grow your wealth base, then give us a call. Uh, you can click the Calendly link, but if that the time you want isn't available, call us at 888-696-4653 and we will get you with somebody wonderful. And I know you're going to find that they, I'm, I'm very confident, you will find that they are wonderful uh, to help you create a plan that actually supports you and your personal goals. So keep in mind that it is definitely time to cover your assets and financial shields are made of physical gold and physical silver and will cover your assets. So until next we meet, please, please, this is not over yet. Please be safe out there. Bye-bye.